Hello everyone, I am Manti Sharma and you are watching E4M Pride of Bharat Brand, a unique series that celebrates the resilience, skill and success stories of some of the top SMBs in the country. These businesses have not only scripted great success saga for themselves, but have also immensely contributed to the growth of Indian economy and also the Make in India mission of the Indian government. Today, we are proud to have with us Mr. Chaitanya Ramalinga Gauda. He is the co-founder and director of Wake Fitco, a brand incepted in 2016 as a D2C supplier of premium mattresses at affordable prices to Indian consumers. Today, it reportedly commands more than 40% of the share in the category and had clocked in rupees 416 crores in revenue in the last financial year. And I guess they are hoping to double it down for the coming fiscal. Uh, and we'll get to know more about it from Chaitanya. He'll talk to us about the brand, its story, its marketing strategies, and a lot more. Welcome, Chaitanya. Hi, Mansi. Thanks for having me here. Uh, so let's start from the beginning, as we say. Just tell us how, you know, Wicked Co was incepted, what was the market situation like back then and what, you know, prompted you and other founders to create the brand? Sure. So Ankit and I are the two co-founders and uh, our experiences and past skills were very, very diverse and different. Uh, Ankit comes from a chemical engineering background, uh, IIT Roorkee. And then uh, he worked in a German multinational, uh, understanding the foam and its intricacies. So how is foam made? What are the uh, chemical reactions that happen? How is it, uh, uh, what density does it come out in? What are the properties of it? So he came from that experience. And uh, I am a computer science engineer and post that did my MBA from Indian School of Business, Hyderabad. And so I was a management consultant uh, before Wakefit. And uh, post my management consulting days, I did a couple of startups and both of which were in the consumer internet space. Uh, and so my skills were in online marketing and uh, community building. <clears throat> so the Eureka moment, so to speak, for the company was uh, when Ankit's wedding was fixed and uh, he sort of went to the market to buy a mattress and set up his home uh, in anticipation of the wedding and so forth. And what we realized was that the cost of raw materials, cost of labor and everything else put together was on the one hand and the prices that the consumers were paying on the other hand were two very, very diverse uh, in nature. There was no linkage at all. So we figured out that uh, the consumers are paying a lot more than actually necessary. And uh, we also realized through a little bit of our own research that it wasn't because the product was going through any value addition in the value chain, not at all. It was just going from middleman to middleman, finally reaching the consumer's home. So everybody was just adding their own margins. So the middlemen were not really adding value. So for example, in a software, uh, uh, reseller business before SaaS came in, uh, the middleman would actually add value potentially by installing it as well as training you and then taking a cut of the margin. But here, nobody was adding any value. The distributor was buying it from the brand, then selling it to a dealer. The dealer would then sell it to a retailer. The retailer would then sell it to the consumer. And they, would, they were all just adding margins. So we said, okay, there seems to be an opportunity to disrupt this. Uh, we didn't know that it was going to get this big. Uh, we only knew that we wanted to try this and uh, we were fortunate enough to be here today. We cannot delve into it a little deeper, like from 2016 when you started to now. Uh, how have your revenues increased and how has your brand saliency in the market increased? Uh, and how have you been able to build all this up in such a short span of time? Uh, I'll answer the revenue first and second, uh, the brand. On the revenue side, the year one was about six crore. Year two was about 27 crore. Year three, 81 crore. Uh, year four, 199 crore. And year five, uh, 415 crore, 415. So we have steadily grown uh, two to three X every year. Uh, and uh, the main focus of the company has always been to deliver good quality products at affordable price points. So can we support the middle uh, class uh, um, folks in India? Because that's where we all grew up from. That's where we are all from. So can we 
enable them to have a beautiful home, an aesthetic home, an ergonomically designed home, a scientifically designed home, but at an affordable price point. They should not have to go to a local unbranded store just because the big brands are all very expensive. So that's the dream. On the brand side, uh, long ago, we realized that we do not have the marketing budgets uh, to play in the traditional game of just television, radio, and print. Uh, that was the old world. And fortunately, a lot of external factors also supported this. Uh, for example, the rise of Google and Facebook to enable deeper targeting. Uh, secondly, the ability to run video ads on YouTube and so forth. And thirdly, uh, the proliferation of uh, mobile internet in the country and very, very inexpensive smartphones enabled a large part of India to be internet savvy. So all these three things came together at around the same time when we were trying this. So we've been also fortunate in terms of uh, timing. So what we did in terms of building brand salience was always to focus on ROI driven marketing. Even when we do top of the funnel, we try to keep an eye on the ROI. And more importantly, we said we will not play the budget game. We will play the value added content game, which means can every piece of my content, can every piece of my advertising add value to the consumer's life? Can we earn the privilege of their time if they're spending that 20 seconds to view an ad or if they're spending those four to five minutes to view a funny piece of content, can we add value where something they would feel that, hey, I learned something and I was entertained. So that was the dream. So we said we will always put content as the hero, brand in the back and add value to people's lives. That is when it is going to become share worthy and people will love it. So you look at all of our viral campaigns. I think you'll see that one pattern. Yes. Uh, so what were the agencies in terms of media? media you initially started working with and who helped you, you know, on this uh, vision that you want to create good content that adds value. Sure, I think there have been a lot of partners uh, throughout our journey, uh, mm -hmm. but consistently we've had uh, Spring Marketing Capital, our creative agency. Um, secondly, uh, we've had Essence, a group M entity for our media buying needs. And uh, thirdly, uh, we've uh, a lot of our uh, uh, brand performance and other marketing is also done through LogicServe. Uh, so these are the three agencies who have been partners with us. And prior to this, we also worked with Gen Y Medium. So these are in the last six years or so, we've worked with these partners in a major way. Great. Uh, as you mentioned that when you started, you didn't uh, really have, have big marketing budgets to push the brand uh, forward. Has it changed now or are you still have a uh, tight hand over your budgets towards the marketing side? As we've raised funding, uh, so we, are, uh, we raised our Series C just about uh, three yes. months ago. Yes. So as we've raised funding, uh, the common misconception is that, oh, we've raised funding, so we need to blow up money. Hmm. Uh, but thankfully, our DNA of saying solve a problem first, hmm. use money only to uh, put rocket fuel behind the solution. Hmm. That has always been our DNA. And to this day, it's the same. We yeah. don't throw money or people at the problem. We say, can we apply our minds to it? Can we look at the data? Can we look at analysis? Can we look at best practices? Can we look at case studies? After all of this, we will find a solution that works for us. And when you do find a solution, there's nobody more aggressive in spending than us. Hmm. But we don't start the solutioning with money because that can take you in the wrong direction as a company. So, But do you have like, uh, say, some percentage of your overall revenues? Uh, yes, we don't uh, look at it as per... Uh, we don't look at it as... Uh, uh, percentage of revenue because again you will not find the right comparable as a startup say who do you compare against and say it should be x percent of your revenue because we are path breakers and you don't have a direct comparable because traditional companies operate in a different pnl and in startups and new age companies there is no direct comparison so what we do is we look at what at what level do we want to keep our cac and cost per order cost of acquiring a new customer and cost per order, at what threshold can our PNL support? And then within that, be very aggressive. For example, uh, we always keep the cost of acquiring a customer at under eight to 9% of the selling price. So that's a very, very uh, powerful threshold. Uh, and that means we will have a very healthy PNL. 
so those kinds of card rails is what we put rather than say a hey, percentage of revenue and then that's your budget co spent uh, we don't think like that that's quite interesting uh, and apart from that as you are a digital brand, so obviously digital must be leading the marketing game for you in terms of media. But apart from that, what all mediums, traditional or mixed, uh, out of home radio, what all uh, mediums are you present on? And what's the effective strategy for each of these uh, various mediums? Like how do they help you in acquiring the right consumer at the right touch point? So as you know very well, Mansi, the attribution is a big problem in our industry. Yes, you it is. Do not you do not find credible software, credible tools, or your own internal methodologies to clearly attribute who, which platform was successful in top of the funnel, which was successful in middle of the funnel, and which one finally converted at the bottom of the funnel. Yeah. So the way we approach this uh, problem is to say that uh, we will have different goals for different mediums, hmm. and we try and uh, and use our previous data and use our data science team's expertise to pull together insights on what has worked and what has not worked. So uh, to go back to your original question, we do not, uh, we have never gone on television till now. Uh, and radio and print has been sporadic. So once a year or so uh, during a festival period or a big sale event and so forth, we participate, but otherwise we have not. So a large, large part of our spending has been digital. So there again, on the top of the funnel, we always look at brand lift, we look at brand track, uh, we look at uh, uh, the quality of uh, uh, the cost of uh, lower bottom of the funnel conversions. So when we are bringing a customer from the top of the funnel by doing X targeting for Y demographic in Z location, how is the bottom of the funnel performing for them versus other cuts and so forth. So we Although we don't track top of the funnel spends with conversion because the objective is to bring, build brand salience, we at the end of the day try to link it saying if the customer heard about us here, uh, are they the, having the right message uh, being registered in their minds? Uh, do they even remember that the message was delivered? And finally, when they are thinking about buying a product in our category of sofa, mattress, dining table, wardrobe, whatever it might be, anywhere in the next three to six months. Uh, are we at least in the top two or three in the consideration set? Are they even thinking about us? When they are searching uh, for their products, are they even considering us as we fit as a destination? So that's how we look at uh, the spends between top, middle and bottom of the funnel. All of these data mining and you know, observation do you have some third party or, or uh, third party partners with you for this data? We have, uh, no, we have our internal data science team. Okay. So we have uh, built our own dashboards. We look at uh, the data on our own and form insights also on our own. What is the repeat percentage? Where are the repeat people coming from? Uh, where did they hear about us? Uh, where are the brand new customers coming from? Which platforms? What cost point? Uh, how much did a view of uh, a video cost? How much did a new subscri subscriber edition cost? Because we don't buy subscribers. We, they like the content and then they subscribe on their own. So how much did that cost? So we have all of these built in-house using our data science team uh, who work closely with our technology team. And do you have an internal creative team as well? Or you are completely depending on the agencies? We have internal creative team uh, which shares responsibilities with the creative agency. Uh, but a lot of the strategic discussions are done by our brand team with the creative agency. And the execution work is split between the agency as well as our in-house team. Uh, as you mentioned earlier during the interaction, that uh, most of your campaigns have that viral capability where you put the content first. One I particularly remember because it was also very recent, uh, the Kumbh Karan campaign uh, that happened. Uh, can you give me a little more insight into that? Like what was the idea? How did it strike you? And the sort of response that you have been getting for the that particular one? Sure. I'll give you two, three examples and then you'll be able to relate what I say with Kumbh Karan better. Yeah. So last year, uh, in 2020, when uh, the wave one hit us, uh, mm. we didn't know uh, what kind of disease this was, COVID. Yeah. So there was a lot of anxiety, lockdown and so forth. So we did a series called Open Letters. And in Open Letters, we, we just had people ranting about things that were bothering them at that time. So we had a husband's video of how he was fed up of washing dishes. 
uh, a bachelor cribbing about missing hotel food uh, uh, a bachelor telling his uh, domestic help saying that take care of yourself you don't need to come because lockdown you better be safe so different people from different walks of life there again the brand took a back seat then when there was wave 2 we had a campaign with sonu sood where we said sabke ghar ki baat hai which means it it wasn't the government it wasn't the uh, medical fraternity I, nobody can do it alone so the biggest help that can happen is through your own citizenry can you help your neighbor can you help your colleague can you help your friend whether it is food or medicine or just being there so uh, things like that is what we've done and kumkaran also have followed the same dna which is can we show that we can celebrate hindu mythology which is indian mythology and from there take a character that is very well known for sleep and build a lot of concepts around it hmm. uh, and the, it it had almost become a tana that are tu to kumkaran ka beta hai so we wanted to turn it on its head and say that hey it's actually good to value your sleep yes. uh, and uh, we turned it around and made that the narrative and we had a whole set of films where kumbhakaran is testing our mattresses uh, and uh, and he is saying that approved by kumbhakaran he was giving a stamp of approval and post that uh, we had this idea of creating a chief sleep officer profile on linkedin with kumbhakaran's photo and for his whole biography and so on and so forth that went crazy viral uh, and then we did the ad films as an addition on that so that finally took off because by that time the base had been built yes. so their whole thing is the message has been you need to value your sleep and we are going to celebrate people who value your sleep that was the underlying thought process of how kumkaran was conceptualized between our brand team and uh, our mainline creative agency and then the execution was all these methods uh, linkedin twitter uh, then content films then ad films great um, again coming back to the point we mentioned that you have also made content is the hero of your marketing activities uh, and digital right now is a very very crowded platform it's not just brands like yours who are talking to the consumers but individual creators and then they have turned influencers and they are talking a lot more creating a lot more in that sense like do you feel a constant pressure of you know coming up with that uh, stand out idea all the time or you know just trying to get viral or maybe get, get the right eyeballs so how do you deal with all of that actually we don't uh, take pressure because uh, the bench and the whole ecosystem has changed uh, earlier you, you had to do a three month study with uh, somebody like nielsen or imrb get the one single consumer insight then do concept and link testing over the next two three months then yeah. produce it in the seventh month then launch it in the eighth month and then run that creative for the next two years yeah these days your conceptualization to shoot to release is barely three to four weeks hmm. uh, so if you miss something it's okay you can always catch something else but if you are not authentic to the brand then you will seem fake yeah that's when people notice they they'll feel that oh it, this brand is just forcefully trying to fit itself on a wave that is currently viral hmm. so that's why we stay away from that pressure and say whether it is viral or not whether it is going to uh, get crazily uh, a lot of eyeballs or not the focus is can we look at the two lenses of is it adding value to people's lives and is it something that we want to say as a brand yeah. if it's intersecting then we will do it and fortunately for us we've had more hits than misses yes uh, so baad mein ja 2020 then uh, <laughs> uh, share mat ban uh, oh. they all crazy things right that it it was playing on everybody's mind we just verbalized it yes uh, yes so so yeah that's that's the approach we don't if we feel that we have to follow others usually that is not a good barometer for a successful campaign mm-hmm. makes sense also the sort of category that you are in you know mattresses it's like a one time purchase and for a long time the consumer might not come back so uh, can you uh, explain me like uh, you don't have to just stay connected to the consumer who had brought your mattress maybe 6 years ago and maybe planning to buy another one in 4 years time but also constantly get new consumers and as you said your acquisition threshold you have maintained it quite low uh, so how do you go about it uh like i mentioned earlier mansi we have uh, branched out into complete home solutions now yeah. 
Yes. So on a monthly basis, nearly 35% of revenue is non-mattress related. Okay. So people come and buy sofas, wardrobes, bed sheets, pillows, and our product catalog has also been very thoughtfully designed. Hmm. If you think about it, uh, a bed sheet is purchased every six to nine months. Yes. Um, a different type of blanket is purchased once a year. Hmm. So if you're in Delhi, like you were joking earlier, uh, <laughs> you need a very thick blanket. Yes. Uh, if, if you're in uh, Mumbai or Chennai, you need a small thin AC blanket. Yes. Uh, and people like new designs. People like hmm. new thicknesses, new feels and textures on their skin. Hmm. Uh, and we've launched bean bags. We've launched recliners. Uh, so when you think about Wakefit, we want you to think about home solutions, that everything for your home is there. And hmm. so the burden of bringing back customers is not residing only with the marketing or growth team. Yes. Uh, the burden is shared with the product catalog team, the merchandising hmm. team, the product production team. So the more hmm. we are able to think on the user's needs, hmm. create the products and then market them well, then the cycle completes. So we don't think of it as, oh, this person has purchased mattress. How do I bring him back for a bed sheet? We yes. think of it as if the person is thinking of this, buying this, browsing this, how can we add value to them uh, through our messages, targeted funnel, drip, drip, uh, drip marketing and so on and so forth. That's how we think. That's great. That's great. Uh, so are we expecting a few more additions to your product catalog in this financial year as well? Yes, Mansi. Every month we are adding new products. Uh, in the categories that we are already present, we are adding more designs. Hmm. For example, in the beds category itself, people want upholstered bed or yeah. a, a hydraulic lift bed for storage, hmm. a side yeah. drawer bed, a teak bed. So hmm. they need multiple varieties. So in the categories we are present, we are adding more SKUs. Hmm. And in many categories, we are entering them for the first time. So just three months ago, we did not have the recliners. And it's already hmm. a hot product. Yeah. Uh, people love our recliners. Hmm. Uh, so those are the kinds of things where we are constantly entering more and more categories in home furnishing, home hmm. decor, and anything related to setting up your home. Those categories, hmm. we are all going to be presenting. Uh, and if we talk specifically about uh, brands, uh, categories like mattresses or sofas or bed covers, people are also looking for antimicrobial or antiviral solutions, especially from the past two years. So uh, are you in that space or how do you uh, how do you see yourself approaching that space in the coming time? I'm sorry to say this, but uh, uh, no product can be antiviral or antimicrobial uh, for uh, despite usage. Yeah. Uh, so the one thing that products can do is mm. to be supportive of being antimicrobial, supportive mm. of being antiviral, mm. which means when it is washed, when it is treated with a particular type of detergent, when it is treated with a particular type of cleanser, mm. uh, can it support that? And can it be uh, remaining to be an antimicrobial or antiviral uh, properties? Can it retain those? Hmm. That is the extent to which any product can activate. Yeah. Anybody who claims and says that you buy my bed sheet and it, for two years it will remain antiviral, it's probably not valid because people use uh, use it, sleep on it, sneeze on it, cough on it. So you, you cannot say that. Uh, so that's how we uh, look at it. That treat it uh, for anti-termite, antimicrobial, antiviral and so forth as part of the production process. And then when they use it, retain those properties as much as possible. That's the that's what we are also supporting. Makes sense. Completely agree to that one. Uh, coming to my last or maybe second last question. Uh, how are you seeing the year 2022 for yourself, for the brand, and what sort of marketing and distribution and sales strategies you have in place for the year? What kind of goals are you chasing? So... For marketing, I think we want to just do what is uh, always been our DNA, yeah. uh, add value to consumers, entertain them. So that we will do more of that. Uh, in terms of distribution and sales, uh, we are already present on our own website and marketplaces. And our own website is the largest channel, but mm -hmm. uh, we are also expanding into the offline channel. Mm -hmm. uh, our experience centers have been very good successes till now. So we are modernizing them bringing them closer to the city and so on and so forth. Uh, so you will see a lot more of marketing uh, for our offline experience centers also. 
uh, in the coming uh, years. And products, of course, we are excited about all the new launches that are happening. Uh, and my last question to you would be uh, for people who have just started their businesses or are already in the market but have might not have got that right kind of marketing strategy on board as of now. How important is the right kind of marketing and how can a brand figure out its own voice or its own space in such a crowded space? Then there is a saying that you need to escape competition uh, through authenticity, hmm. uh, which means uh, if you are faking it, customers notice it, investors notice it, uh, and your own team does, does notices it and they won't believe in what they are doing. Yeah. So a good authentic brand voice comes from three sources. The first one is what the founders and senior leadership thinks about the brand. What do they live and die for? Hmm. In our case, that is customer experience. Yeah. We don't want to have an unhappy customer. So we go to great lengths to keep them happy. The second voice is of the uh, customers itself. What are customers saying on your reviews, hmm. on video testimonials, on phone calls, hmm. and so on and so forth? Because they are the, in this day and age when feedback is very open, they are telling good and bad things about you everywhere. Social media, yeah. Amazon, Pepperfly, Flipkart. They're writing about you. So can you listen, read, analyze? Then you'll know what are they saying and why are they liking or disliking you. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing is all your team members. You might have 100 team members or like in our case, we have about 1,500 people. So uh, how, what are they thinking about Wakefit? When they think mm -hmm. about Wakefit and come to work, what is it that is driving them? Yes. So if you can listen to these three sources, hmm. your hmm. brand's voice will come on its own. You don't need to create it artificially. Uh, so that's been our belief. Well said, Chaitanya. And I guess that's it from my side for today. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to talk about the brand or, you know, the coming year? Anything that you think uh, the viewers might, uh, viewers would like to know? I think we are very, very excited about uh, completing the complete home solutions range, uh, which means all categories from uh, decor to curtains, to carpets, to kitchen and tableware. Um, so just our dream is to build Wakefit as a legacy that lives beyond us as founders. <clears throat> and when customers think about anything for their home, uh, they should think about Wakefit, at least as part of their research and say that, hey, it's a company that I trust. I want to look at it there once. I think that's the dream. So I hope uh, the audience also uh, trusts us that much and believes in us that much. Thank you so much, Chaitanya, for your Thank time. Thank you. Great interaction. Thanks, with you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Bye.